Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its Creator. And may the Lord bless us through the reading of this wonderful reminder for a new lifestyle. Colossians 3, 1 to 10. There are three points in time that we must consider in our study of ourselves, what we were and what we should be. Let's look at the past. What happened to Christian believers when they accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord? This is what happened to us. One, we died. That's what Colossians says. We died. We died to our old sinful selves. Sabi, you have taken off your old self with its practices. Nung namatay si Kristo, ang kamatayan niya ay para sa atin. At nung nabuhay siya, yung pagkabuhay niya ay para rin sa atin. Kaya nung namatay siya, tayo rin namatay. Lahat ng mananampalataya, kahit ngayon lang kayo nanampalataya, nagiging retroactive, it's as good as you have died with Christ. And we died to our old sinful selves. Hindi na tayo ang dati. What else did we die to? We died to the power and control of sin. Romans 6.14 for sin shall not be your master. Dati, nung hindi pa tayo namamatay kay Kristo at kasama niya, ang ating Panginoon ay kasalanan, hindi natin kayang labanan, kahit anong gawin natin, hindi natin kaya. But when we have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, we have died not only to our old sinful selves, but also to the power and control of sin. But you might say, eh bakit nakokontrol pa rin ako ng sin ngayon? But hindi ko pa rin malabanan? Bakit gusto kong bumait? Hindi ko magawa. Dahil lang, you choose not to. Ang pinagkaiba ng Christian sa non-Christian, yung non-Christian, wala siyang power over sin. Kahit anong gawin niya, matatalo pa rin siya noon in the end. But, yung Christian, yung tinubusan ni Kristo, tumanggap kay Kristo bilang Panginoon at Tagapagligtas, kung gusto nating manalo over sin, pwede na. Pero, kung nagpapatalo pa rin kayo, matatalo pa rin kayo. Hindi automatic ang victory. But if you want to be victorious, it is now possible because Romans 6.14 says, For sin shall not be your master. Kaya kasi nung alingan yung sinasabi, hindi ko na kaya, hindi ko kaya sapagkat ako'y tao lamang. Yes, kung wala pa tayo kay Kristo, hindi natin kaya. Pero kung na kay Kristo na tayo, pwedeng kayanin. So ano lang yung natitirang conclusion sa mga natatalo? Nagpapatalo kasi. We choose to be losers. We choose to commit sin. But if you would make a strong and a firm stand, you'll prevail and you'll win. Ang sabi, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Ang linaw ng Bible, hindi ipagpipilitan ng devil. Ang sabi lang, resist and he will flee. So if the devil is not fleeing from the Christian, there's one, uh, only one conclusion. The Christian is not resisting or not resisting enough. What else did we die to? We died to the punishment of sin. Hindi na tayo mapaparosahan sapagkat tinanggap na ni Jesus ang kaparosahan na dapat ay para sa atin. Isaiah 53 verse 5, But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him, and by His wounds we are healed. This will be echoed by 1 Peter 2.24 in the New Testament. He himself, referring to Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree, referring to the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So nahugasan ng dugo ni Kristo, natakpan ng katawan ni Kristo at sugat ni Kristo ang ating mga sugat, kaya naman tayo ay hindi na kailangang parusahan pa sapagkat tinanggap na ni Jesus ang kaparusahan para sa mga mananampalataya. 
So, what happened when we accepted Jesus? In the past, we died. Then, there's another thing that happened. We were raised with Christ. Nung bumangon si Jesus, bumangon din tayo. Kaya yung pagbangon niya mula sa kamatayan almost 2,000 years ago is still very relevant to us sapagat yung pagbangon niya na yon yun din ang ating pagbangon. Na nung tinanggap natin si Jesus ngayon, bagamat sa ibang panahon, but God is timeless at coverage ng kanyang death and resurrection is timeless also. Kaya when Jesus was raised, it is also our being raised. Believers, even of later times, were vicariously raised with Christ when He rose from the dead. That's what happened to us. Ano pa? We have put on a new self. So we have died to our old selves, we have been resurrected with Christ, and now we put on a new self. We were renewed. Bago na tayo. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Yan ang magandang uh, isipin. Kahit na nanalamin tayo, parang pareho pa rin yung mukha natin, pareho pa rin yung katawan natin, pero merong nangyari, ang espiritu natin hindi na pareho. Naging bago na, brand new. Hinugasan na, kinalimutan na yung lahat ng kasalanan in the past, at isang brand new spirit ang nakikita ng Diyos. A spirit that has victory over sin, that has died and has risen with Christ, and is now a totally brand new person. That was the past. Kahit sino sa atin ang tumanggap na kay Christ bilang Savior and Lord, nangyari na ang lahat ng yon. Now, what about the future? Let's take a look at the future. What will happen to Christian believers? One, we will appear with Christ. On His second coming, kasama tayo. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. According to verse 4 of the chapter that we are reading. So we will appear with Christ. Two, we will be like Christ. Can you imagine that? We will regain the image that was lost in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned. We will be like Christ. First John 3, 2. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. In 1 Corinthians 15, 49, And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Kung naging katulad daw tayo ni Adan noon, magiging katulad naman tayo ni Kristo pagbabalik niya. And what else will happen in the future? We will live with Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 11, Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with Him, we will also live with Him. Makakasama natin si Kristo forever and ever and ever. Ephesians 2.6 And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Makakapiling ang Panginoon habang panahon. And not only that, we will reign with Christ. 2 Timothy 2.12 If we endure, we will also reign with Him. Yan ang mga nangyari at mangyayari pa. And because of what happened in the past and what will happen in the future, we now have to focus on the present. The present. What should be happening to Christian believers today? Tapos na yung past. Hindi pa dumadating yung future. Pero merong present ngayon. A new past which was cleansed. A new future which is glorious should center on a new present. May bago na tayong nakaraan, may bago tayong hinaharap, therefore, dapat meron din tayong bagong kasalukuyan. Colossians 3.10 And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Meron pa tayong present perfect dito. Being renewed. Hindi tumitigil. The ever-present present should see us being renewed week by week, day by day, moment by moment. Because of the past and because of the future, we Christians are two, one, change the way we feel and change the way we think. Verse 3, Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. Again, lifting from the verses we have read. 
that we must set our hearts on the things above. Ang puso natin dapat nakatuon dun sa mga nabagay na nasa taas, nasa langit, hindi dito lang sa nasa lupa. Dapat, ang iniisip natin lagi, yung will ni Lord, yung kalooban niya, yung maganda, yung katanggap-tanggap, yung honorable in heaven, not only on earth. And two, when we think of the present, we should change the way we live and the way we act. Our action, our behavior, our habits. Anong sinasabi dyan na pwedeng gawin at dapat gawin so that we can change the way we live and act? Put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. Wakasan na ang buhay. Paglamaya na, ilibing na ang lahat ng may kinalaman sa ating pagiging makalupa. And one of that, they were enumerated, sexual immorality. Sexual immorality has no place in the life of Christians whose past has been forgiven, whose future is assured and glorified, the least we can do is to dedicate to the Lord the present. Ano pa ang dapat wakasan? Impurity. Ng mga bahid, dungis, mansya ng ating kaluluwa, ng ating espiritu. Staining beauty with ugliness. Staining cleanliness with dirt. Because it is not compatible with our forgiven past and our glorious future. The present must be compatible with the past and the future. Since the past has been changed and forgiven, and the future is already assured to be with Christ, the present can only but agree with both time frames. Kaya kailangan yung here and now alagaan natin. Ano pa daw ang dapat wakasan? Last mga makalupa at mga makamundong mga pagnanasa. Desire, thought, more than that, less than action. Kasi yung action is already an immoral act. But last, can be in the mind, the sins of the mind, which, when entertained, is followed by the body. It becomes full-blown sin. What else should end, brothers and sisters, because we have a glorious future and a forgiven past? evil desires. Pagiging sakim, pagiging makasarili, walang iniisip kundi ang sarili lang at the expense of other people. We like to enjoy many pleasures. Greed. So that is what should be put to death. Those are what should be put to death. And then the Bible also says, as we read uh, Colossians, we should rid ourselves of many things. Dapat meron tayong tanggaling maraming bagay sa ating buhay dahil tayo kristyano. Una, Anger. Ang isang kristyano, hindi na dapat pang magagalitin. Kung minsan-minsan, nagkakaroon ka ng temptation to be angry, pero hindi dapat nagtatagal sa iyong puso yung anger na yan. Immediately, you identify it as coming from the evil one, and you reject it. And you confess to God, ihingi ng tawad, at sabihin, hindi na ako magagalit. Tama na to. Stop! Freeze! And we make restitution. Bakit mayroon pang kristyano? Kung magagalitin ka rin, mainitin din ang iyong ulo. Bakit pa may kristo? Wala rin naman palang effect. So dapat may pagbabago sa ating buhay. Read ourselves of anger and also of rage. Ano ba yung rage? Siyempre, intense anger. Sometimes with matching violence, with matching bad words, and terrible behavior. Rage. Hindi na dapat at hindi bagay sa mga kresyon yung mga nagdadabog-dabog, nagbabulibag ng pinto, nagbabagsak ng telepono, nagbabatuhan ng mga plato, mga flower base. Hindi bagay sa kresyon. You only look at your past, forgiven and cleansed. You look at the future, holy with the Lord. I bagay bagay mo naman yung present mo. Ano pa? Malice. Colossians says we should rid ourselves of malice. Mga malicious thoughts assigning very negative and very bad meanings to what people say and do when they don't mean it. And not only that, more than that, malice is when you do something from a malicious point of view, that you have a hidden agenda, that you actually are plotting, mayroong palang balak na masama, nagmumukha kang mabuti, papaamo ka ng tao, pinapadama mo lang pala para mamaya ay pagsamantalahan, malice must be what? Rid of. Rid, it should be ridden of. Dapat inaalis sa buhay natin yung malis. Yung malinis tayo dapat pure. Hindi yung lagi ng merong balak na 
nasa ilalim ng mga pinagagagawa natin. And of course, we should rid ourselves of slander. Paninirang puri. Pagsasalita na nakakasira ng karangalan ng iba. Lalong lalot, hindi pa nga totoo. Kasi kahit pa nga totoo, hindi pa rin yun ang marapat na gawin. Dapat gawin natin, itama yung tao, ipanalangin siya, tulungan siya. Pero hindi siya siraan ng siraan ng siraan. What else should we read ourselves of according to Colossians? Dirty language. Napakaraming mga dirty language uh, na nagiging fixture of daily life. Four-letter words that should not be there. O kaya mga mahahaba, mga mura, mga nonsense na mga comments, at lalong-lalo na yung pagkaladkad sa pangalan ng Panginoon as an expression, ginagawa lamang na parang expression ng pangalan ng Diyos. Samatala mga Israeli ay tanganong araw, hindi mabanggit-banggit ang pangalan ng Diyos. Pagkatapos yung iba, kung banggit-banggitin, pangmura pa kung minsan. This is a terrible sin. Anong sabi sa isa sa mga Ten Commandments? That you will not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Hindi dapat ginagamit sa mga expression. And what should we read ourselves of? Lies. Pagsisinungaling. Yan ang isa sa mga habits na dapat matanggal sapagkat kahit mga Christians kumisan. Liars! So, hindi white lie naman po. Anong white lie, white lie? There is no such thing. A white lie is a lie. First, it is a lie before it becomes white. And those that tell white lies soon go colorblind. Lahat na pwedeng gawing white lies. Napakahalaga po ang pagbabago. Why hate these things na ating binanggit? Ba't sila dapat kamuhian? Because according to verse 6, Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. Yung mga bagay na yan ang nagpapagalit sa Diyos, ang ngit-ngit at puot ng Diyos ay darating dahil sa mga bagay na yan. At kung alam ninyo na ang mga bagay na yan ay pauulan na ng apoy, ilulubog sa asupre, susunugin, why do you want them in your person? Why will you want them in your pocket, in your heart? E di na damay tayo. Dapat alisin. Conversion, salvation, being born again, is not only equal to new beliefs or new ideas or new religion, but conversion, salvation, being born again is equal to a new past, a new future, and therefore a new present. Ephesians 4, 22-24 You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Dapat andaan, tayo ay bago na. Hindi kayo naglalaban ng damit, tapos matapos na ang linis-linis, tapos na ang paglalaba, ihuhulog nyo lang sa putik para marumihan muli. At tayo ay hinugasan na ng dugo ni Kristo, tinubos na ng kanyang mga paghihirap, binigyan na ng bagong buhay, huwag niyang sayangin yon. Habang ang Christian naman, pag nagkakasala, we can seek forgiveness through repentance and through confession. Don't take it lightly. Forgiveness is free, but it is not cheap. Because every time we ask for forgiveness, every time we seek cleansing, we ask for the blood of Jesus to wash us. Huwag niya naman siyang sugatan araw-araw para lamang dumanak ang kanyang dugo para tayo mahugasan. Ngayon yung iba naman, o bakit hindi ko na nagko-confess ng kasalanan? Nahihiya na kasi ako sa Diyos. Huhugasan na naman niya ako. Kaya hindi na ako nagko-confess. Aba, hindi yan ang pagiging mahihiyain. Kung talagang nahihiya ka, tumigil ka magkasala. Hindi yung magkakasala ka pa rin, tas nahihiya ka magpahugas. Dahil ikaw naman ang lugi kung hindi ka nagpahugas. At gusto naman tayo ni Lord hugasan. But remember, it is not to be taken lightly. Cleansing is free, but not cheap. Because every time we seek for cleansing, every time we seek cleansing, Jesus has to shed blood to cleanse us. That's how much He loves us. Walang pagsasawa. Yung iba naman, sobra ng napaka-light ng treatment sa sin nila. Ito yung matutulog na lang, Lord, ang lahat po ng kasalanan ko ngayon. Tulad din yesterday, forgive me, good night. Parang napakagaan ko i-confess. 
Samantala, ang totoong confession is from a contrite heart, a broken heart with matching tears. Then, lungkot na lungkot ka, hiyang-hiya ka at nagkasala. And if you can confess so lightly and so casually, maybe you have been desensitized. Masyado na tayong nasasanay muli sa kasalanan. Ano sinasabi sa Bible? The dog returns to its own vomit. Pero dogs yun, hindi tayo dogs. Dapat tayo yung isinuka na natin noon, itinapon na natin, binitawa na, huwag nyo nang balik-balikan. Marami mga Christians, pag bagong-bago ang Espiritu ng Diyos sa kanila, bagong-bago ang pagkakilala sa Panginoon, itatapon lahat ng kasalanan, goodbye dito, goodbye doon, goodbye sa mga immorality. Tapos maya-maya, isa-usa uling dinadampot dahan-dahan. Kaya pagka mga 3, 4, 5, 6 years, 10, 15 years ng Christian, parang katulad pa rin siya nung dati, before naging Christian, except na nagkaroon ng religious language, misan may dalang Bible, pero pag tinignan mo ang kaluluwa sa X-ray ng langit, pag in-ultrasound ng heaven, kita naman lahat. So ang mahalaga, panindigan ang ating pagiging bago. First Peter 1.14 as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Nakikita nyo, nakapast tense, to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Noon pa, pwede tayong mapatawad sapagkat ignorant pa tayo. Subalit ngayon na alam na alam mo na, tapos sasadyain mo pa, aba, para naman tayong nakikipagbiroan sa Diyos. Kaya sabi, huwag nang makiayon pa sa ating mga masasamang mga pagnanasa nung araw na tayo'y nabubuhay pa sa kadiliman. Tayo'y natapunan na ng kaliwanagan, mabuhay tayo sa liwanag. You cannot hide your sin in darkness. You can hide it only from human eyes, but not from the eyes of God. When a Christian sins, he or she does it in full, broad daylight. Because God is light and God sees everything. So what can we say? Baguhin natin ang ating buhay. Surely, hindi tayo mauubusan ng pwedeng baguhin. Masasabi niyo siguro, marami na ako ang pinagbago. I'm sure, marami pang dapat pa ring baguhin. Kaya habang dumadagdag ang mga taon natin dito sa lupa bilang Kristiyano, dapat nagigita yung more and more and more like Jesus. That is what success is. That is what accomplishment is. To be more and more like Jesus. In the end, that is what counts. 1999, kamukha ka ni Kristo. 2000, mas kamukha ka ni Kristo. 2000, wow, wow, walang kamukha, kamukha, kamukha. Sa 2002, talagang lalo pang lumapit. Dapat ganun. Hindi yung habang tumatagal, nagiging kamukha ka na naman ni Taning. Yung tinatawag nilang nagbabackslide. Nawawala na naman ang wangis ng Diyos. Bumabalik na naman ang mga manasasamang ugali, ang mga katamaran, ang mga kung ano-anong selfishnesses. So, bilang bao natin this new year, think Christian. Will you say that? Think Christian. Kahit yan bad grammar, madaling tandaan. Act Christian and live Christian. Hindi lang Christian kasi ako eh, pero huwag mong pansinin ang buhay ko. Actually, born again ako, pero you know, huwag mo na akong gawing model. Hindi ganun. You think, you act, and you live the way Christ would. Napaka-importante. Maging serious tayo sa ating spirituality. Huwag niyong biruin. Sapagat kung misa, nagbabackslide tayo, patituloy ang lahat ng mga mga pangapangit na bahagi ng buhay natin noon, bumabalik din kasama ng mga kapangitan na pinapayagan nating bumalik sa ating espiritu. Bumabalik uli ang gulo ng ating isip, bumabalik uli ang ating mga problema, kasi lumalayo tayo sa Panginoon. Manghawak tayo sa Panginoon. Be serious. And if you already are, be more serious with your relationship with Jesus. Make it a grand personal fellowship with God. A fellowship that you have nothing to be ashamed of because you live as Christ would have you live. Let's bow before the Lord in moments of silence. Isipin natin kung ano mga dapat baguhin sa ating lifestyle because we have a new life in Christ. We have a forgiven past. We have a glorious future. The least we can do, ibaga yung present sa past and future ng true believer. Let the Spirit minister to you. And if the Spirit convicts you that there should be a change in this way, in the way we think, the way we live, the way we act, the way we move, the way we speak, let God have His way. His victory 
eventually is also our victory. Let God be your king, especially this year.